everybody, Complete Pete back again. Today, I wanna to go through the process of retrofitting an eight foot strip fixture that's fluorescent and converting it into LED. Um, some of the tools we're gonna to need for this process is gonna be a cordless drill. Uh, I use a set of lineman's pliers. Uh, there's also a pair of needle nose pliers. I have some wire strippers. I have a voltage continuity meter. Uh, we're going to need a quarter inch uh, drive and I have a pair of safety glasses. So those are all the tools and I probably have you know four too many here. It doesn't hardly take any tools at all to do this uh, this retrofit. What I have here from TechBright uh, is a manufacturer. I got this from Pro Lighting on uh, eBay and this is a kit specifically for an eight foot uh, fluorescent strip fixture. The fixtures I have are, uh, they're strips, but they have reflectors on them to shine the light down. You'll see that later. But this kit will work on both, both types of fixtures. So basically, there's really not much to it. Have some, we have some uh, detailed instructions, which we will go through later. We have some of the mounting plates here, and I will show you in a little bit how the sockets attach to these plates. We also have a bag of, uh, of goodies here. So we have the correct number of sockets. In my case, I'm going from two F96 T12 lamps to four, uh, uh, four LED lamps in the fixture. So we have some tapping screws and these are the screws that we will be self-tapping into the fixture to mount these uh, socket brackets. These are our sockets, and this is a quick disconnect. So what we'll do is, uh, by code, we would need this. Your, uh, our supply 120 is gonna go into this single end right here, and then from our sockets, we're gonna be going into these uh, push connects. It's all for 18 gauge wire, the size that's already in the fixtures. You can see it says push right there. If you're working on the fixture, you can just disconnect it to do your work and you can plug it back in again and it's on. So it's a, it's a disconnecting means. It's a lot safer way to go. The only thing I would mention, and you hear a lot about, a lot about it, is uh, standard sockets versus shunted sockets. Uh, this is a standard socket and you can see it has four, four holes on the bottom. So each side of the copper contact inside the socket and I have to turn this little safety cover here for you. So neither one of these is making contact with each other and I'll just show you quick. I have just my Fluke uh, T-Pro meter and this meter is just something I could throw in my pocket and I use it in my electrical duties. You can see that they're not making any contact. So this is an unshunted socket. And I know some of these kits are so confusing and there's so much information out there that I just want you to understand this part. Um, this is a shunted socket. And if you look at the bottom, you see there's two places to put the wires on one side, the other is blank. Um, I'll rotate this little safety cover, my fingernail, and this will be shunted, meaning these should both be connected together. And that's, that's a problem because if you put your 120 in this one here, you're gonna get, we're gonna put a 120 volt lead in here and a neutral over here. If you did the same thing on the shunted, you're gonna have a, a direct short. This kit, however, is a full retrofit kit, so it automatically comes with the correct unshunted sockets, which is, which is great. And then um, we'll move on to the, uh, the demo phase. Our first step is to strip the fixtures. So we're going to uh, pull these lamps out and we're going to start taking these reflectors down and, uh, and gut the fixture. So step one is to remove the lamps. You'll see I have the power on right now. The, uh, the sockets in this fixture are actually disconnect sockets. So as soon as I take the bulb out, it's just the circuit off. So I'm just going to pop these out quick. Okay, now we have the lamps out. Next step is to remove these uh, reflectors. And a strip fixture is just a strip fixture would normally have flat covers. I elected to go with the reflectors uh, to push the light down for doing mechanical work and things like that. So I'm gonna remove these little clips. These are little quarter turn clips, very hard to turn. 
um, and that is exactly where your lines and pliers come in. A little quarter turn, hold it up in the center. A little quarter turn, and got to drop down. Okay, so we have our covers off. Um, we have our power coming in through the center of the, center of the fixture here. And I'll explain a little later why I chose the bulbs I did, uh, basically because of the same reason. Uh, this is our power wiring coming in. Just get it unwired here. And again, always turn your power off before you work on any of these projects. Turn off the light switch, turn off the circuit breaker if you can, and always do it the safest way possible. This is way in the, uh, way in the range for the home DIYer. So don't be afraid to give a project like this a try. And there's our, this are, that's, those are our power conductors. You see when I wire things, I leave a ton of wire. And these are our sockets. So we don't need any of this wire anymore. Um, the ballast is gonna be bypassed. We're gonna, we're gonna disconnect the ballast completely. You can disconnect it, you can remove this. Um, I'm gonna leave it in the fixture. It's not bothering anything in there, but I am gonna disconnect the wiring uh, coming from it, which is right here, and it, it is dead. So I'm gonna remove that. And I'm going to strip the end of the fixture by just pulling on the shell and pulling down and pulling out the socket assembly and all the wiring. We're going to use some of this 18 gauge wire over again when we wire our new sockets. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Here we are at the other end of the fixture. Uh, that's you know one thing when you're working on eight foot fixtures, you're kind of moving the ladder a lot. Plus I have a garage door opener in, in the middle of it. Uh, same thing on this side. We're going to disconnect it. Ballast is disconnected, there's no more power. I really don't want to dispose of this in my garbage pail, so I'll just leave it up in there for now. Next thing is bend in the fixture a little bit. And we just pulled out the sockets, and we're not going to use those anymore. The next thing I have to do is pull out this center joiner piece, because there's going to be uh, sockets here, because again, this fixture is going to be two four-foot lamps here, and two four-foot lamps on the other side. So I'll just bend the fixture a little bit, pull this out, and there we go. So this wiring doesn't do anything anymore. It doesn't have to be capped off. It's totally isolated. Uh, we're only going to be using our uh, wiring coming in from the branch circuit. And now the fixture is stripped. Next step is, um, as I mentioned earlier, I saved uh, the one end that has the black and the white number 18 because I'm going to reuse that solid uh, those solid conductors So the next thing I do uh, is set up the the bracketry. You can see the brackets here. You can see the sockets um, I'm going to turn this one back because this is the one I'm going to be fighting to put the bulb in later since I turned this little I turned that little thing already little gate and you can see the grooves right here in the in the socket and you can see the, the uh, cutout in the bracket. So this is just going to slide right in there. Sometimes they take a little bit of persuasion and it just pushes in and then there's a little clip that pops up. Okay, so we have, uh, we have all eight of the sockets prepped on the brackets. Now, the thing about these brackets you'll see is they have, uh, they have some uh, like big ovals here. This is what our latches are going to go into to latch the covers back on. Uh, this groove here is for the self-tapping screw, and you'll see later that when we drive the self-tapping screw in, uh, we always go in the center, and that will give us a little adjustability if we have to slide this in and out. Uh, these two slots here are for the U-shaped channel of the fixture. Uh, if you have a wider fixture, like a three-lamp T12, you're going to be in this slot. I happen to have a two-lamp. I'm going to be in this slot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a little bit of a bend. And I'm sure you can just grab this thing. I don't think I could sleep at night. So I like to grab it with a pair of pliers and I like to put a sharper bend on it. And I just happen to know that this is the width of my channel. Just bending it over. Because these are made for you know many different types of uh, styles of fixtures. So basically, that's what it looks like. 
So the channel of the fixture, this is gonna slide right over the fixture, which I'll show you. It's gonna go up and we're gonna drive a self-tapping screw right in, right in there. Okay, we finished up you know, bending our, all their legs over to the width of my, my U-shaped channel. And what I do is I just bend them in a little bit uh, because when I'm trying to grab my cordless drill and I'm trying to grab the screws and, and I, I only have two hands, uh, with, that, with this little bit of tension, it will hold it onto the fixture. Um, so in this fixture, I went with a, a single end feed bulb. We'll talk about that later. So in the center of my fixture, uh, we're gonna be mounting the sockets like this. And we're gonna go over that in a minute. So we're gonna mount them like this. We're gonna fasten them to the fixture. And then we have the other end. Since I went with a single end lamp, 120 volt goes into one side of the socket. This socket gets no wiring whatsoever. It's a dead socket. All it does is uh, there's pins on the end, end of the bulb and it's just gonna hold the bulb in place. That's all it does. All the wiring gets done right in the middle. And if you remember me mentioning that my power comes out in the center of the fixture, this is why I chose to do that. As I mentioned before, the bulbs I chose are a single end feed. So since we bypassed the ballast, we're putting 120 volts right into the socket. So I've done a lot of these, but if it helps, I will. There's two holes here, two holes here. So this is gonna be my, my 120 side, and this is gonna be my neutral side. This will be my 120 side, and this will be my neutral side. So I can easily remember that, but you know, you can, you can easily uh, get confused. So you don't wanna mix those up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna get about a six inch or so length of this number 18 wire. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna strip the end, appropriate length for those sockets. Okay. And then I'm going to strip the other end also, because that's gonna go into our wire nut device. Okay. So black is always my hot one. So I'm gonna take the black and I'm gonna stick it right into the hole, give it a little tug and that's good. Then I have, I have my neutral and my neutral is gonna go into the neutral side, push it in all the way down, give it a little pull. And that's, that's one pair. Now I'm gonna strip a second pair, also about the six inch length. And you definitely want to use the number 18 wire. Uh, these devices won't accept anything larger and anything smaller is going to give you a bad connection. Okay. So here we are again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our black hot leg, staying on the 120 volt side, push it right into the socket, there you go. Now we want to feed 120 volt over to the other socket. So all I'm going to do is put my other leg right into the 120 volt. So we're 120 to 120. And this is just a good way to keep track of it. No one's going to ever see that. It's just for your own information. Same thing with the neutral. Neutral goes in. It's tight. It's going to go right over to the neutral side. And there you go. Then this, this is completely wired. And then what we're going to do is just take the end of this and one neutral is going to go in here. Okay, and it's tight. And then the hot leg is going to go right into the black right there. And that's it. And then I'm going to wire up a, a second identical assembly to this one. And then we're going to take the long black and the white and we're going to simply put the neutral and the 120 volt leg right in there. Okay, so as we can see, I just recreated the same exact thing. I wrote 120 in neutral just so you could get a, a good idea and be confident that you, you can do this. These are my center sockets. So these center sockets are gonna go back to back, just like that. And you could see how I tied them into the, to the supplied wire nut slash disconnect. The next thing I'm gonna do, or the last thing I'm gonna do with this assembly is I cut two more pieces of the number 18. So you can see, it's stripped on the uh, short side here, 
and a strip on the longer side here. So the short sides are going to go right into this, this, this uh, wire nut here, and you can see there's a, a 1 and a 2. So uh, that, this is the uh, 120 volt, the 2 is always the neutral L2, so I'm going to stick that right in there. Short side, short side, because uh, the number 14s that I wired my fixture with won't fit in there. So th those are good and tight. And then these ends are going to get connected to the wire nuts up in, up in the fixture itself. Okay, so we have our, our two sections. And again, this is going to be in the center of the fixture. Um, we only used to have four lamps, because uh, four sockets, because this is a four lamp fixture. Um, and all we're going to do, and you can see the, um, the slots here. Um, so we want to have like an imaginary center on, the, on this fixture. So I'm gonna, just going to stick these over here. Stick those right on. And we're going to be back to back. And I just need to, you know, find our, our center of the fixture. Which I think is right about there. So remember I said if you bend the tabs, it will stay up there. I have some of the little self-tapping screws that came with the kit. These are little quarter inch uh, self-tappers. You can get them at the hardware store. I'd recommend buying another small bag. It's probably about a dollar. You're gonna drop these no matter what you do. They're gonna hit the floor. You're gonna swear you know where it is. You'll never find it. Um, you'll also need a quarter inch uh, magnetic driver. This was out of that Milwaukee kit. I really like it. It's got like every kind of tip in there. So I'm gonna hold this up. I'm gonna find my center, which is right there. And then I'm going to get right in the center of the slot. And that's one. We're going to mount the, uh, the socket on the left end of the fixture. And remember, this is the dead end. Uh, all this does is hold pins uh, into, the, into the lamp so it just stays up into the fixture. So we're just going to mount that right on here. All the way back to the end cap. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to come up just a little bit about an eighth of an inch, and I want to drive a self-tapper. I put my safety glasses on. I was reminded that I should always wear my safety glasses. Uh, if you've ever had a metal filing in your eye and had to get held down while they pick it out with a needle, it's uh, something you don't want to do. So wear your safety glasses. Right in the middle again. And that's going to give us a little bit of adjustability. You go to put the bulbs in, you might find out there's not a lot of the pins sticking into the socket. You can loosen these up and slide them in or out. Okay, so we have all the sockets and the adapter plates installed. You can see we have the, the center power sockets that we talked about, we wired up earlier. And at the far end and the opposite end here, we have the dead sockets. And again, all they do is just hold up one end of the bulb. Um, here's, the, uh, here's the quick connect, disconnect that we had earlier. And this is the, uh, the part we we connect it to it. So I'm gonna make the connection to our uh, the supply wiring to the fixture. I know these are long and I could cut them shorter. I just hate to cut wire short. Um, so I always connect the neutral first. And you can see I'm going to bring the wire. It's already grooved here. I'm gonna bring my new wire right up in there like that. And then I'm going to take my lineman pliers and I'm going to wrap it right around with the other conductors. Okay? So that way you don't want to lay it, you don't want to lay it sideways on there. So now this is part of the, the wrap, it's all connected together. And I'm going to put my wire nut back on. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to do my phase conductor. We're going to do our 120 volt leg. Same thing. Take the cap off. I'm going to take my black wire and I'm going to lay it, get the insulation right up there in, in the wrap so you can see. And I'm going to take my lineman pliers and I'm going to just wrap it right around with the other conductors. Okay, and always do this with the power off. Okay, so we're all set. We're connected to our, our, our feed to the fixture and we have our, our disconnect. So I'm going to take our disconnect 
and I'm just going to plug it right in. There we go. I have lots of extra wire, so I'm going to show you what electricians do when they have lots of extra wire. We'll all hate to cut wire. Just put it up there, twist it together a little bit, and that will stay up in the fixture. Once we put the, uh, the cover on, that this will go right up inside the fixture. Reinstalling the reflectors. You can see I got the one side uh, installed already. Just lining up my clip so it'll go into this little slot here. <clears throat> Plus I want to get this wiring pushed up nice and straight. I don't want to pinch anything, so I'm keeping an eye on it. These are very hard to turn. That's why I keep my linemen handy. Okay, let's get this other side on. And that should do it. Next step will be to lamp the fixture. This is the bulb I went with. It's a Sunco uh, T8 LED. It's frosted, 2200 lumens, 18 watts, and 5000K. So I, I really like this bulb. You hardly see the LEDs in it at all. Um, it has uh, the lumen level is very high, and 5000 Kelvin, as you can see, is daylight. Like an incandescent light bulb is going to be down here in the, in the two, low 2000s or high 2000s. As you start getting up to 3,000, uh, you start getting a little brighter. We're, getting, we're up into the blue range here. So this is equal to daylight outside, which for a shop is exactly what I'm looking for. It's 120 volts, 120, 277, so it could be used in commercial applications, incompatible with ballasts. So this is a single end wiring. So we only, we're putting 120 volts, a hot and a neutral on these two pins and the other side isn't doing anything. And that works out really quick. I, I had the double end type uh, that were, I used in my basement and it was a lot of wiring. This was so simple. Uh, they also make plug and play lamps that you can get, uh, but there is a transformer inside this lamp that makes the LEDs glow. So you're not only running your old magnetic or electronic ballast, you're also running the transformer. So for the best energy efficiency and to prevent the old bowels from overheating or burning up or just sucking electricity, um, I would disconnect it just like I showed you earlier and I would just use the single end. Um, they also have, like I said, they have the double end and they have some uh, uh, composite bulbs that will plug and play, single end, double end, they do everything. Uh, so in our case, we're just gonna use the single end fixture. Lots of packing material in here. Didn't drop the bulb, bulb stayed in the box. So we got the protective caps on the end. Just pop those off. That's one. That's two. Plastic, which I really like. There's a strip here, so when we go to mount this fixture, we'll have this strip horizontal. That way when we rotate it, the strip will be on the, the up side. And the side with the writing on it is the power end. So this end, these pins are not connected to anything on this end. They're just dummies. They're just holding the one end of the bulb. This end here is the 120 volt side. So we have to put 120 volt to one pin and a neutral to the other pin. Again, we have the dead end and we have the power end. So I'm just gonna take the dead end and stick it in the socket, first thing. I'm gonna take the power end and I'm gonna get that up into the socket and then rotate it up. And we have light. I'll get the rest of these bulbs in and then we'll take a look at it when it's done. Well, everybody, this is it. This is our uh, F96 T12 uh, fluorescent fixture conversion project to LED. I think it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I hope you have the confidence to, to work on these type of projects on your own. Nothing to worry about. Follow the instructions, turn off your power, be safe, and I will talk to you next time.